All right, we are here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the vending machine park of Sagamihara. Check it out. Some of you probably recognize this from about a bazillion other YouTube videos. If you haven't, then maybe you need to check them out. But I'm making an edited video, which will probably drop tomorrow or the day after tomorrow with my friend Scotty from the channel Strange Parts. Check it out. We don't have any cars right now in front, so it is a quite unobstructed view. And I wanted to show you this really quickly before we go in. There are 108 vending machines. Every single month, he's like, seems to be adding a new one. And uh, check that out. There's a, a hot noodle vending machine. There's old Coca-Cola vending machines. Oh man. Let's just get in. Let's just get into it. For the next 15 or 20 minutes or so, I want to take you through here. I've been editing. Sorry, I've been here three times in the last two weeks to film a main channel episode with Saito-san, who is the owner of this. He showed me inside of the machines, and I'm really excited to bring that side of the episode to you. Um, a lot of YouTubers will show you the food, but not a lot of people will show you what the guts look like to these retro machines. It's just totally awesome. But there's more than just what's right here. And it, it's not a really easy place to get to. You can take a bus from the station at Sagamihara, but I highly recommend that you come with here with a rent-a-car because it's just so much more convenient. The staff already know me quite well for being here like every every couple of days to film, but that's the, that's the way I do the uh, Only in Japan channel. It takes a long time to make one episode, sometimes multiple trips here. Look at that old cup noodle. Look at the old Pepsi one. Check out that, that 7-Up machine. It's got like a rotary dial on there to pick which one. They even have high C orange. What? High C? Is that still a thing? High C. That is so cool. 10 cents it says on there. I don't think that, oh, okay, it's 100 yen. nice to be out here in the countryside. How you doing everybody? They also have new vending machines. These types you've seen uh, um, uh, if you watch Eric Surf 6, our friend over there, he's quite often showing that particular, those kinds of new vending machines, which are pretty exciting here. Uh, I'm going to be focusing on the edited video on this one in particular. This is a curry rice vending machine. It's one of a kind. It doesn't, there, there aren't any left that work like this. This is the only one in Japan, which is pretty awesome. And check out this um, popcorn vending machine from America. Josh Schneider, thank you. Thank you, Josh. Actually, I do have a bunch of coins and we're gonna put that to very good use. Take a look at some of the stuff. I tried this as well. This is milkshake in a can. It's not that good. But for me, <laughs> it takes a lot for me to wanna to eat. Uh, and drink some of this stuff it's just pure sugar but it's not that it's not that bad i mean it's better than than you would think let's go over and just right off the bat we're gonna try it try um i, I tried this one in the main channel episode too let's just go off and try a burger shall we and then we're gonna walk around and take a, a closer look got a, a pocket full of coins here all right it's up to you guys watching in the live stream chat which burger I get. These hot toasted sandwiches we know quite well. I believe he works at the tire shop, which is what this place is, but he's more often working at the vending machines than he is at the tire shop. All right, there's two burger machines here. Um, so our choices are hamburger, hamburger, hamburger. And then over here we have uh, um, this is ebikatsu, which is a shrimp cutlet. This is a fish burger, and this is a chicken katsu, which is a, a breaded deep fried chicken cutlet on bread. So it's up to you guys, what do you want? I should actually ask Josh, what do you want, Josh? I'm happy to get that for you. It's, t it's not an easy choice, is it? My 
Michael Sassano is here. Get something to snack on in the future. Uh, Louis, I, I think I will go and try and set one of those seven ups. But I'm, I'm wondering what you guys want here. Um, which burger? Actually, I, I think I might go for the ebikatsu. Since I'm not receiving that. Okay, yeah, Rex Harz writes in here shrimp. So let's do that. It's, it's 280 yen or 300 yen. Okay, let's go for the uh, ebikatsu. It says it's heating. Look at that. All right, it's in actually a microwave. Here's the temperature on there. Oh my gosh. All right, so when it comes out, you're gonna see the burger pop in here. It takes approximately 30 seconds. That's so cool. Here it comes. I can smell it. I can smell it. It's being microwaved. These are, if it has a microwave in there, that means that the burger probably, if there's a microwave, that means this is probably from the mid 1980s, this machine, because microwaves were not prevalent before that. It was hard to find them. They were quite expensive. So back in the 1980s, uh, in the early 80s, having a microwave was like a really luxury item. They costed about a thousand bucks. If some of you remember, I think you, they had them back in the seventies too. All right, it's still, it's still, uh, oh, here it comes, here it comes. Wow, look at that box, it's so retro. Look at it, that's awesome. Even has the expiration date, November of 2023. What? That can't be right. Really? I mean, this is good till November. I think it must've been frozen, right? That's, that's right. It was probably frozen and then the microwave, you thought it. It's a long, sh it's a long shelf life, I'm just saying. Now I'm not gonna chicken out. I'll eat it, I'll eat it, but it's just, slightly long, right? I don't, I don't know. All right, let's, let's find a place to eat. The cool thing about this place is that they actually have a table, but sometimes it can be full. Oh no, it's okay. There's a, there's a dining table here. I'm reading, I'm reading the ingredients here. It's got a lot of ingredients, so I'm guessing there's a lot of questionable stuff in here. The bottom line is just cool. I, I opened the box so I can keep it. Oh wow, all right. It's, uh, it's pretty hot. Oh, it's hot. Oh, that's... It has like a fish fillet at McDonald's uh, smell to it.
Save it for later. I, I do like the fact that they have that um, chair there that you can kind of sit and people are coming here taking pictures. I, I saw some other live streamers. People really uh, like this place. It's just, it really is a unique um, experience to come here. And how could I not go live and bring you guys with me? Um, there's so many vending machines that they've actually, you can see down here, the corridor, they've, they've actually put them outside near the parking lot. And every couple of weeks he gets uh, tips and, and uh, buys a new one. They usually come broken and he has to fix them up. But uh, the main business here is tires. So he has the know-how, Mr. Uh, Saito-san, to do this kind of stuff. Bradshaw Studios in the house and Mike De Silva. Thank you. Let's get a drink next. Let's get a drink. They got some weird stuff in here too. Look at this like sparkling uh, ume. It's not ume shu. There's um, um, nachan. Here's some uh, curry. Is that curry? A ramen in a can. There you go. 600 yen for ramen in a can. You don't see that very often anymore. There's oden. We got that in Akihabara though. And these drinks are from Aomori, I believe. Are they? I think so. There's some weird stuff. Um, so this is one row. This is in the front that you saw. And then there's, there's a second second row here in this dark alley, uh, um, book, bookended by this uh, battery vending machine. You don't see this very often. That still works. How much is it? Uh, 70 yen. So these are like Daiso 100 yen batteries, but you can get them for 70 yen from the machine here. So that's kind of kind of good. But I, I don't have any use for the for the C size batteries at all. But let's go for a really slow walk here. If you see something you like, you guys can uh, send me a, a message right now because we're live and I'll stop and take a look at it. No, they do not have underwear vending machines here. Nasty. This is the newest uh, addition, the Cafe Olay vending machine. This came in uh, last week and um, Saito-san showed me it repairing it. So the main channel episode is going to be really interesting. Yeah, Scotty, Scotty's chan, uh, channel, he has a Strange Parts episode coming as well, so the two of us collaborated. Look at this um, ice cream. You know, this is an interesting one, and I'm not going to talk about this in the main channel episode too much, but UCC Coffee is the first coffee that, that came in a can back in the, the uh, Osaka World Expo in 1970. So that's when they came up with the idea of canned coffee, and they put it in a vending machine, and it was really popular back in 1970. 53 years ago and what what's interesting is the world fair is coming back to osaka world expo in 19 in uh, 2025 so i'm going to be i'm looking forward to going there they have three or four cup noodle vending machines from different eras this one i think was from the 19 uh early 1980s and this one's from the later 1980s i think he said the great thing about these is that you know put the cup noodle in here in the hot water dispenser yeah you have to buy it to get the hot water to come out it's, it's very interesting now the, the machines here are very easy to break so please do take to be gentle with them if you do come there are security cameras several of them and there was an act of um, vandalism uh, maybe about eight or nine months ago where somebody got was drunk probably and frustrated and ended up banging it and breaking it and that's really sad. Oh, here's the old school Coca-Cola's in a bottle. Oh man, it's always better in a bottle. This is more like a museum, I would say. They call it the vending machine park because you, people are parking their cars. So it's kind of like a car park. I had no idea that Budweiser had a Bud Zero. It's odd. But with all the people driving here, it makes a lot of sense. This is one of the coolest vending machines, uh, a baseball player endorsing this curry. But the thing is, the curry, I believe, is in a bag. 
I think you just buy the, the box of curry or it comes in like this. Okay, so it's a heated curry that comes out looking like this. And that's 400 yen, which is pretty reasonable. Bon curry, is, they still have this around, so it's quite a famous brand. But it's interesting that they keep the old retro boxes in there. That's These are actual boxes from, uh, this looks like the 1980s. Maybe early, late 70s, early 80s. This is an old uh, coffee machine that uh, looks also from the uh, early 80s, late 70s. Uh, yeah, I can kind of guesstimate because of my own age, because I've seen vending machines somewhat similar to this. The thing is, you know why these vending machines aren't, oh, look at this, look at this noodle one. This looks like a noodle shop, because it says noodle shop. I, I, I hate this one in the main channel episode. So one of the reasons why the vending machines are, are, uh, aren't as interesting these days, can anybody tell me? It says a poll question. Why aren't there, hot delicious vending machines like this one here anymore why are these dying out in fact uh, niche 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 day was a company that had the hot food vending machines um they stopped the production of it in about two years ago so they, they no longer have those hot food vending machines the microwave ones they're gone do you know why Coon dog, you are very, very smart. Ven uh, convenience stores. Convenience stores killed the vending machine. Can you believe that? What's more, conven what's more convenient than a vending machine? A convenience store. You no longer, for the food vending machines in particular, you can get really good cheap food from a, a prepared in a kitchen, I guess, at the convenience store. It's, it's just, fresher I guess and maintain but the thing is in order to have a food vending machine you need to have the same license that a restaurant would have so they prepare the stuff in the at this vending machine uh, park in a kitchen that they have here to the side which is super cool right blink tv 909 writes in here go to the hamburger vending machine please I just did you have to watch it in the playback I just did I have it I have it up the box in my pocket too How's that? <laughs> All right, I wanted to come here because this is next. I'm super, super curious. The thing is, all right, they don't have any 7-Up in the 7-Up machine. They don't have 7-Up in the 7-Up machine. Oh my gosh. This feels so good. The original plastic, just be really gentle because it's already cracked. So I'm gonna go for a ginger ale here. I think that's good. I see Mr. Das is in the house. Long time no see, buddy. Could, could very well be, yeah, the convenience store is All right, let's get a ginger ale, because that's the closest thing to... Whoa! Oh my gosh, it came in a bottle. Oh yeah, you remember this? Oh, that's so satisfying. That is so satisfying. They have the um, a bottle opener right in the machine. All right, come by. That's really good. That's really good. Oh my gosh. Oh. Wow. I used to, when I was born, when I was younger, they had a lot of machines like this. You don't see it anymore because the, bo I think they should bring back, forget the pet bottles, bring back glass, man. Oh man, glasses, it just tastes and feels better. It's better for the environment.
Here's another, oh, that's a Wilkinson's ginger ale. This is the Pepsi machine, and they also have a um, bottle opener. There's ginger ale in here. The thing is that the original drinks are sometimes replaced with what they've got today, but they do an incredible job of actually finding the stuff from the past, because the, despite the fact that a lot of these machines are 40, 50, 60 years old, a lot of the companies that make this stuff are still in business and make it in the same iconic shapes that will fit these machines. That's awesome. Oh man. Do you guys know this word? Natsukashi. Natsukashi. It's very um, nostalgic. Very nostalgic, I think. Yeah. Like, look at this. It says here 27 seconds you can get a Kitsune Udon. You guys want to see inside the machine? All right, let's follow him. See what he's replacing. This is an Omikuji machine or fortune telling slip. And that's what you see here attached to the top of it. These uh, white pieces of paper are, are Omikuji or fortune telling slips. All right, let's take a look inside of the machine. There's a lot of cars here. So this is the hamburger vending machine that I just got my chicken katsu at. And here you can see, oh, there is a microwave, yeah. the different burgers on the side and when you push the button that uh, will activate the drop into the microwave look at that is in uh, this machine here. Yeah, that's the one that he's, that he's refilling right now. Like, I should ask that one. Hi. So he, he refills it about three times a day, but also there's the ebikatsu and the uh, other burger. So that's fascinating. And there are hundreds of burgers in there. It, it looks like hundreds. It's probably like dozens. I do tend to exaggerate slightly. <laughs> All right, let me take you into the backside here now. Just a note that the udon, sorry, sorry, the soba in here, it's a 350 yen. The, the chopsticks are here, so you can get chopsticks. It's filled with chopsticks and a little spice that you can put in there. It is really good. I thought the soba is the best item, one of the, the better items here. They also have takoyaki in this machine, uh, potato, potato butter. What? 
um, on donuts, which is red bean paste donuts, taiyaki. The thing is, all of these machines, all 108 need to be refilled. And there's a warehouse in the truck over there and they're continuously like uh, filling in the machines. Now, the thing with the retro machines is you don't know when it's empty, but they have a kind of a schedule written where they can estimate based on every day the usage Monday to m Monday to Sunday on when the machine needs to be filled uh, based on the averages so that that's the way that they kind of do it in an efficient way or else you would just be continuously opening every single machine all the time. Um, I want to show you here. So this is in the back here. There's the kitchen where they, they'll be uh, making the rice and stuff. I'm going to put, I'm going to, I want to keep this here actually. I'll be back. I want to show you now. There's a window for tobacco. You can't, I, I don't know. They, they still have, they used to have cigarette vending machines. There's an old school vending machine for cigarettes here. But right now, the cigarette vending machine is, uh, is stocked with uh, candy cigarettes, <laughs> which they still, still sell. This one's chocolate and this one is blueberry cigarettes for kids. I don't know. All right, let's go through this uh, darker area where the signal might not be as wonderful. This one is a real find. Look at this. This is a potato chip vending machine and here is a baseball roulette vending machine and you don't really see this. I, I This is the first time I'd seen it at, at this particular um, vending machine corner, vending machine in, uh, park. But when you buy it, it plays a game and, and uh, I guess like every thousand times you'll hit a home run and you win something, which is pretty cool. That's what these lights, and the fact that the lights all work is pretty darn incredible. I wish that they made more vending machines like this where you could win stuff, but that's what you call a gambling machine. So <laughs> people play to win, right? This is an old microwave. You can tell from the, the style of it, 1980s, the old um, Nietzsche um, box of vending machines. I, I don't know where they get these anymore. They stopped making these. So it must be a different company. But these are the ones, they had these at, at some parks just a couple of years ago, but it's very hard to find. This is a a, a, a gyudon, and this is a, a, a chukadon, which is, which is Chinese food, and this is um, a stew and rice, which is interesting. It's all microwaved inside, it's a thousand yen though, so that's, that's kind of pricey, but it might be just because of, it's very hard to find, perhaps. The toy vending machines are kind of cool. Check out this driver, Japanese driver's license for cats. I might get that. That's kind of cool. These handcuffs, not so much, maybe. Who are you, you going to arrest? <laughs> you know, imitating a police officer is a crime. I like these, the old conveyor belt vending machines. You don't see these a lot anymore either. Look at that, the old popcorn. This one's hanging. Look at that. frozen uh, ice cream machine with a generic looking sailboat in the distance. What do they got here? P frozen Pukari Sweat. That's pretty cool. These machines are, um, they, these are the ones that they use in the US, but they're quite rare here in Japan. So it seems a little odd. And I was talking with a, 
a man who owns a retro game center. He was here this morning at around 6 a.m. And he, I was talking to him about um, um, some of the stuff in his shop I might go and film. And he was telling me um, a lot of these old vending machines from the uh, came from the United States. And they're very expensive, but during the bubble era in the 1980s, you could bring in unique vending machines from abroad. People had that kind of money. They don't anymore. And here's an old Coca-Cola vending machine. You can see the, the bottles of Coke in there um, with the bottle opener. And there's a, a place to leave the glass behind. The vending machines also are, have deposits for different shapes, which I thought was really interesting. So you could fit box drinks or you could fit uh, thin cans and even bottles. So that was uh, something I think that um, as the years went on, the designs of the vending machine allowed it to be more versatile. These ice cream vending machines are super cool. Look at that. Instead of having a boring lineup like this, they put it in a Pentagon. So those in Washington DC might recognize this. Oh. Here's the chocolate bananas in here. Chocolate bananas, wow. That was, that was Saitos on the, the um, owner. <laughs> it just walked by. Now this one, this is the one me and Scotty were like uh, freaking out about. Like what's the deal with a camera vending machine? They still have it. You could buy, you can't buy any of the rolls of film. They're all sold out except for this one. What? It's a Kodak Snap Kids. What? It's 1,800 yen, or about, 50, what, $14 for that? This is 60 yen, which is, these are candy. So, actually, it's not a camera at all, it's just candy. But it's sold out, so I can't get it. And then, he, I think some of you might, some of you might remember, uh, so, you'll see this in the main channel episode, but the, do you know the, the um, slogan or the, um, motto for Kodak, right? Um, you just, um, what is it? You you just press the button, we'll do the rest. Like, it's an amazing slogan from the 1890s for port, uh, cameras like that, but I guess when it came to Japan, they changed the motto because it, it was just too simple to this. Paint your passion, bear your colors. The world of Kodak Gold Film, colors that shake the soul. What is this going on here? What? Um, maybe that's why Kodak didn't work so well here in Japan. But, you know, Kodak was going up against Fujifilm, which there's a camera for Fujifilm in here. In fact, the, the film itself are from Fujifilm, so. This is an old book vending machine that now sells curry, which is interesting. And the uh, one other thing about this place, I like this, is that you get, a, um, they recycle everything. So these bowls uh, get recycled. Everybody does a great job here in Japan of separating the trash, uh, the burnables, uh, trash like chopsticks and other stuff that might also be recycled, I'm not sure, go in here. The glass bottles go in there. Uh, and then if you have soup or something left over, they go in these barrels. So you just dump your soup in there and then you put the empty thing here if you can't eat it. So I like the way that they, they set that up. On the side here, don't miss this one. You see that in the center, that red one? That's a popcorn vending machine. We look inside of this. Um, you, you're gonna wanna check out um, Scotty and my video. We look inside of this and show you how this actually works. It is fascinating. They put an actual, um, they put an actual microwave in there. The way it works is just, it's absolutely fine. Oh, he's opening the, okay. Hurry, 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 hurry. All right, we get a chance to look inside of here. where the, the ramen broth comes from.
fascinating. That says soba to you. That's where the soup. That is so interesting. And then the, you can see the power is on. They do not make these anymore, by the way. And you can see um, the technology and is all like transistors and things like that. It's all old school. These are about 40 years old. You can see the door for this is really thick. It's so awesome. And here he's gonna replace for ramen. There's the the ramen broth. It's quite salty, I thought. Oh my gosh! Look at all the wiring. Of, of people who want to uh, want to come, it can get quite crowded here. <laughs> Excuse me. That is awesome. Are right, you gonna go get my burger? Just over here. I hope you do check out the main channel episode on this. I'm, the editing is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, where exactly is this? Check it out here. So this is where I am right now. Uh, this is the vending machine uh, park. There's not a lot of things around here. It is about a 55, one hour drive from Tokyo, from where I live near Ginza. Came out here. And uh, it's not that easy. To, it's, it's easy to drive here, but it's, uh, it's harder to take public transportation. You can see uh, the tire yard behind him here. And here's a map that, that'll give you a little bit of a perspective. Uh, see here, uh, right here. This is the, the trip I had to take. So you can see from Tokyo, it's, uh, yeah, it took me 56 minutes uh, this morning. So there's, you can go on the to Tomei Expressway towards Nagoya and cut across for uh, that direction, or you can come around through the mountains, but it's a little bit longer, but maybe less traffic. In the morning, when I came at five, uh, six in the morning, 5.30, I came in uh, on the Tomei Expressway because it's more direct. Now it's gonna be packed at Ebina, I bet. But that's how you would get to this uh, vending machine restaurant, uh, vending machine uh, park is what they call it. Because you come here to park your car and then you can get your food here at the vending machine. And I interviewed Saito-san, who's the owner, uh, for about 15 minutes, and I got the lowdown on on all the machines, why he does this. It's fascinating. It, it's where you can take a hobby and turn it into something big. Because if you look at this, it is big. There's 108 vending machines here. That's just, it's just, an, it's, it really is insane. 
Oh, this is a, an even older cup noodle. They don't even have the displays for the cup noodle. It comes out here and then you uh, put the water in. Sometimes the older the machine is, the better it is. I don't know why. There are certain areas where things just got a little bit too cheap. Back in the 70s, they really made it like out of metal and stuff. This is a new style of vending machine here. It gives you fresh orange juice. And Peter found one in Tokyo, so this is nothing really special. This is an old, check this out, an old um, umbrella vending machine. One coin, 500 yen, you can get yourself an umbrella and a mask vending machine. You see these in hospitals still. You'll see these in hospitals. can of pineapples <laughs> why I don't know I got more questions than answers oh that's nice so I'll be taking this home very cool I you know I sometimes will do the thumbnails for my main channel episodes I do them piece by piece all right, I'll take, um, I'll take them at home with good lighting for me, and then I'll, I'll do some Photoshop and put that into the background of one of the scenes here. It works out really well. I think that's what I'm, I'm gonna do with this. Always have a prop. <sighs> Fascinating. It was a very good one hour drive. This I got this from the Toyota Rent-A-Car. Um, it was like 70 bucks uh, for the day. Um, I had to come here three times. So this episode is gonna cost me about $400 to make one episode. Um, that's why, you know, support like Patreon is really important. Thanks God, Patreon sponsored video. All right. If you haven't already, check out the last episode that I posted on the most beautiful tree in the world. One tree. I'm going to fix the thumbnail. I don't think it's as, it's, uh, as interesting. I'll fix it a little bit later on. But this is a 1,000-year-old a tree that has attracted um, 300,000 people every year to come and visit this small little town uh, in Fukushima. And I think that's really great that, that a town would, would put so much respect into one tree uh, in the middle of basically it's Kodiyama. it's not about 30 minutes away from Kodiyama city uh in in uh fukushima and that was a good three and a half hour drive for me to get up there but it was so worth it for spring you want to go and find the best of the best that is the best tree in japan to go and see bar none you go there and it's like there's nothing around except for this one tree so it's uh, certainly a good episode to go and see and by the way oh do i have a picture of it if if you join if you do want to support me for patreon i really do appreciate it the the money goes back into the production of the show this is going to be the postcard for this month check it out i took this um uh picture this morning i, I like the lighting of it and you can see the machines in there and uh this will be put on a postcard which i'll send to you um in, next week so yeah I might, I don't think I'm gonna come out to Sagamihara and send it. I'll send it from Tokyo Central Post Office because the postmark says Tokyo on it. I like that. That's really cool. So if you wanna get, if you wanna get this as your postcard, uh, by all means, join the uh, postcard club and I will send this to you and I'll, I'll, I'll find the most interesting stamp that is possible to, to make it really interesting. Ang, thank you. Ang likes the postcard. How does John pop up images? It's a, it's a magic. Warren de New York. Have a safe trip home. Thank you, buddy. It's a one hour drive. I might stop off at Costco because it's Costco. I don't know. I'm on a diet. I shouldn't eat pizza, but it's really tempting. I'm trying to lose, lose some weight before Hawaii and, and for the summer, you know, gotta keep in shape. The weather's great. This is post typhoon. 
So after the typhoon, this is the kind of weather that you want to be in. It's, the, the day after the typhoon is always amazing like this. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me. This is really fun. I'm glad that you guys could be here. So when you do uh, see the main channel episode, the uploaded video, you could say you were here with me live. That above the vending machines are uh, hubcaps. And in the back there is a place where they uh, repair cars and uh, give new tires to it. I think that that's, that's uh, his main business. But I'll tell you, I think these vending machines are gonna be the main business in a few years. One last thing. How old do you think this retro vending machine park is? Does anyone have an idea? Just give me a number, take a guess. What do you guys think? I didn't come here by motorcycle, you wanna know why? Because this is all the gear that I come. I brought a, a, a pancake light. I brought my main camera, which I just threw in here. Here's my... Um, uh, A1 which I'll put away nice nice and neat in my bag here and then this big pancake light I had to try to get the shadow off of my face because of the, the sunlight is, is kind of weird right now so <laughs> how do you bring that on a motorcycle alright interesting what what oh my gosh I'm, I'm loving this so your guess is here all right, 30 years, five years, 1973, 25 years. Uh, Nita rates in 40 years. Lisa, 35. Carrie, 37. Michael, 45. Felix, seven. All right, the hub, the, the place with the tires has been here for a long time, but the vending machines, just the vending machines, this is what's really interesting. It's been here for just seven years. Seven. I'm 60 years, 51 years. This has been here for seven years. He's been collecting the vending machines for seven years. I think he might have had one or two before that, but he started off with one or two seven years ago. And he's been, and uh, the people who bring the car to be repaired give him tips on where to get the new ones. And when I came here the first time, um, you know, he gave us the interview and everything. I came here the second time. He, 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 he tapped me on the shoulder and he brought me to the back and he, sh and he showed me the uh, newest vending machine, which is this uh, Cafe Olay vending machine he found in Tokyo and fixed it up. And now it's all ready uh, out here for everybody to use, which is so cool. And he's probably taken one that's broken back into the back to try to repair that. I know, right? It's crazy. We have people here going that, I know, right? Two otakus like, what? I know, that's absolutely crazy. It's been here for seven years, that's it. And the reason why he put it in here, I want you to watch the main channel episode because there's a there's a reason why um, this collection keeps growing. Nowadays, it's for people like me. <laughs> it's a good story. This story will never get old either. And look at all the people that have come here to just to eat. It is certainly, um, it's certainly a, a, an attraction. Check it out. Look at all the people. a lot of people going down here. Can't even see down anymore. Sunday afternoon. So before I leave, I think I'll do a time lapse. A time lapse of people walking by and then uh, head back to Tokyo. All right, in the back here, there's a retro game center. You can see the, the tires back here. But I'm not showing you just, I'm not taking you just because of the game center, I forgot. Check it out here, they have a pinball machine. But this is where the coin changer is. So if you brought 1,000 yen notes, you can get coins from out of here. But they do have some old retro games, including this one that that um, Scotty tries in his episode. I'm gonna leave, it, leave that one up to him to do. There's like an arm wrestling machine. What? That's crazy. And there's, look at this old bicycle machine. Cycle race, it's called. That is so awesome. Look at this old boat.
and there's even older machines out here. Um, I was talking with the uh, owner of the machines that came from another place in Kanagawa. He brought them here because people um, actually use it here. I, I, I don't know. I, I want to get that story too. I think the owner might might have bought it. I'm not quite sure yet. I highly recommend the popcorn because it plays a song when you buy the popcorn. <laughs> oh, it's so awesome. What a day. People come here by motorcycle. Peter should come here for one of his live streams, I think. Yeah, I'm an hour away from Tokyo. There you go. That's my drive to get back. I'll take the long way around, I think. Here's my ride. All right, everybody, this has been fun. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm off. 50 minutes, I thought there was gonna be 15 minutes. What happened? Retro Vending Park is pretty darn cool. The burgers might not be the best in the world, but it's it's certainly fun. And one of these days I'll bring Kanai and Leo here just to hang out. All right, everybody. See you another live stream really soon. the vending retro vending machine park in Sagami Hara awesome see everybody <laughs>